Your Majesty, Prince Albert II of Monaco, and your representative here this morning. Your Excellency, Edward Fritsch, President of French Polynesia. The Honorable Mark Brown, Prime Minister of the Cook Islands. Honorable Ministers of the French Polynesian Cabinet. Traditional and spiritual leaders. And our distinguished friends from around the Pacific. May I say, Yorana, Kiorana, and from Micronesia in the west to French Polynesia in the east, from Palau in the north to Aotearoa in the south, warm Pacific greetings to you all. I'm extremely pleased to be able to join you all at this summit because it is for me an opportunity to explore and to discuss innovative solutions to accelerate ocean-related solutions to climate change. Together, we share a passion, a dedication and commitment to the conservation and sustainable development of our oceans. You see, for us here in the Pacific, as was made clear earlier on, the ocean is more than just a resource to us. It is everything to us, our highway to the rest of the world and a connector with each other. It is our livelihood. It is our identity. It is our past and is our future. For that reason, Pacific leaders have committed to reasonably and effectively manage 100% of the Pacific Ocean within and beyond national jurisdiction. And as the Pacific Islands Forum, our ocean forms the basis of our blue Pacific identity and narrative, which frames our own collective advocacy and engagements in the midst of an increasingly geopolitically contested environment both in the region and globally. But at the heart of our shared commitment to, to, to determine our collective development trajectory is the 2050 strategy for our Blue Pacific Continent, which is our guiding North Star for the next 30 to 50 years. At its core, the strategy is framed around valuing, protecting, and managing the ocean to help us meet our sustainable development needs and goals in the face of ever-growing challenges. Excellencies, friends, I set this context to emphasize the inextricable link that we have to the ocean in all facets of our society. Indeed, we are the custodians of the Blue Pacific Continent, spanning over 448 million square kilometers and making up 20% of our planet's surface. Our stewardship responsibility is one that we do not take lightly. It is also a responsibility that we acknowledge requires strong partnerships in order for us to fully deliver. May I at this point in time acknowledge my colleague from the Pacific Community, Dr. Stuart Minchin, Director General of the Pacific Community. And also at this point in time, I would like to acknowledge my good friend, Nainua Thompson, and all those Waka Ocean going warriors that have made it here to join us in this very important summit. You see, globally, 2022 presents a year of opportunities for our ocean agenda. I can tell you we're well on our way to developing a treaty on plastics. We will adopt an important treaty on biodiversity in international waters later this year. We will adopt a new framework for biodiversity and we will advance the ocean climate nexus dialogue. We will finally create, eradicate subsidies that contribute greatly to IUU fishing in our waters. 
Excellencies, this gathering is an opportunity to contribute to the international momentum on ocean-specific initiatives right across the world. It is only right that I acknowledge the visionary leadership of President Fritz in partnering and holding and hosting this prestigious event right here in the very heart of the Al Pacific. I call on you all who are here today and will join us over the next few days to join us and to work with us to realize the full potential of our ocean. The time for talking and making commitments is now past. We need to see action now. And the only way to take collective action is together. I remember President Obama's election campaign when he ran for president. He said, together we can. And indeed, it's very true today too. Together we can and we must. So how do we do that? Most critically, we need a robust ocean governance framework in place that provides guiding parameters, but does not restrict the ability or flexibility of island states to realize their development aspiration. These need to be in place, both within and beyond national jurisdictions. Indeed, the very nature of our ocean implies that any action in our own waters can and will have transboundary impacts on other countries and to our global commons. The Pacific, for instance, right now, is dealing with the proposed release of potentially hazardous nuclear wastewater into the Pacific Ocean. Interestingly, in a time when we require people to vaccinate to protect themselves and others, why are we unable to require one state to exercise precaution and due regard to the rights of other states? Caring for the ocean you see and its resources is not just our moral duty. It is our obligation under international law. Let me touch briefly on a key piece of work that is being spearheaded by the Pacific globally. In August last year, the Pacific Islands Forum leaders adopted the Declaration on Preserving Maritime Zones in the face of climate change-related sea level rise. It is an initiative that is founded squarely on the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea and will contribute to addressing one of the most critical consequences of sea level rise, our loss of sovereignty, livelihoods, and identity. It is an example of how we can use policy mechanisms such as international law to play a critical role in securing our future. However, critical to ensuring success in all these legal and policy frameworks and entities is to ensure we have a solid enabling environment. This is where we will look and continue to look to solid and mutually beneficial partnerships that support our priorities for the future. Last month in Palau, over 16.35 billion US dollars was committed at the Our Ocean Conference. However, this is but a drop in the commitment we need to see work and actions on oceans more generally. Some estimates have indicated a funding gap of around $150 billion per year to implement Sustainable Development Goal 14 that focuses on our oceans. For us here in the Pacific, the Pacific Oceans Initiatives Registry has tracked 74 projects in our region, representing USD $864 million with each project covering, averaging about 11 million US dollars each. But, ladies and gentlemen, the needs are still high. In the face of the challenges before us, we continue to work together to search for collective solutions that respond to our unique vulnerabilities. 
One such initiative is the Pacific Resilience Facility, the first Pacific designed, led, and owned initiative that will provide communities with direct access to financing that will ensure that existing and or new community level projects consider and prepare for the increasing risk of climate induced and other natural hazard risk disasters. This is a funding gap in the multilateral uh, financing gap available around the world. We know the challenges facing the development financing landscape at this point in time. Therefore, we will work to innovative private donors and philanthropists to also join us and make a commitment to this important initiative. I urge all of you here in this room today to have a conversation with me on this if you are interested to find out more about it and see where we go from here. Prime Minister Brown here is also an avid political champion of this initiative. But more generally, ladies and gentlemen, as we engage in our discussions this week, there will undoubtedly be many innovative ideas to explore and test with each other. I just urge you to keep in mind that wherever, whatever partnership we build or whatever solution we implement, they must respond to the needs and priorities of the recipients. Far too often now, we see well-intentioned projects that go to waste just because they do not take the time to hear and understand our regional context and listen to our national aspirations. In conclusion, on Thursday afternoon, I had the high honor of spending a few hours with school children in my district, Punauia. My name is Henry Puna, and I'm related to Punauia. And on this trip, over the next few days, I hope to convince the mayor of Punau Ia to give me a piece of land. <laughs> you see, these school children belong to a network of schools with responsibility for educational marine managed areas. My time spent with them reaffirmed one key learning that I've held fast since I started working more concertedly in ocean-related issues more than a decade ago. The fruits of our work today and efforts on sustainable ocean governance and conservation may not be realized in our lifetime, particularly for those of you like me who are going downhill very fast. But let us take comfort in the knowledge that what we do today will be enjoyed by our future generations, our grandchildren, and their children after them. Friends, our efforts today is our gift to the future. We can only be truly effective if we all work together. And I wish us all the very best for the week ahead. Thank you.